where the food is real great and the music's first rate, where I'm glad that I Maestro Bistro. Where you hear old time tunes and all kinds of crews, where they play and sip spoons, Maestro Bistro. Welcome everyone. Here we are, our eighth Maestro Bistro online since the pandemic started. Thank you so much for sticking with us. It's been uh, really fun to have these going and this was just another great um, afternoon of workshops. I can't wait to share all these great performers with you um, this evening. And if you've been to Main Fiddle Camp, none of them will be uh, new to you and you know what, you're, what a treat you're in for. Um, I, my name is Neil Perlman. I'm one of your hosts for the evening and I'm going to uh, just bring on my co-host, Mr. Doug Protzik here. Um, if I can get him going, if he's ready. Um, oh, hi, Neil. And uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for tuning in here to Maestro Bistro. Uh, we've got a great show lined right up, but I thought right. we'd kick it right off here with uh, uh, one of my favorite uh, Down East fiddle tunes, the old Blanchard's Hornpipe. Oh, and yeah, we're okay. going to try playing live here in our super secret synchronized way of playing so are you ready neil yeah i think uh, so he's at the piano and uh, uh wait a minute um how about let's make sure that uh we're internet tuned so can oh, i sure. hear your yeah. internet a please neil? Yeah. all right i think we've got it so here we go <clears throat> the old blanchard's hornpipe okay one two three four Got that out of the way. Um, we've got uh, a great show coming up, so 
Let's move right on with that. Yeah, let's do that. I think it uh, looks like Doug's got to reset his sound for a second here um, from our secret synchronizer. So uh, while he does that, I just want to let you know um, that uh, we are accepting donations from Main Fiddle Camp to support these things going on, um, to support continuing the online programming. We've got very excited to be having another full um, virtual camp weekend uh, in February and such. So if you uh, are enjoying the show, if you uh, went to the workshops and enjoyed them and you want to see anything, uh, see this stuff continue, you can um, donate to the camp um, with the PayPal link that's at the bottom there. But let me just bring a Doug back. It looks like he's got his settings um, sorted out and uh, see see what's going on with him. Yeah, all, all set yeah. now. Uh, yeah, well, we got to change the super synchronizer. Right. So, uh, <clears throat> hey Neil, uh, uh, it was we really had fun with this silent movie uh, last uh, Halloween. That's right. And, and uh, it, it was uh, kind of an experiment, and, and it really worked. Uh, we raised uh, close to seven hundred dollars for the scholarship fund, which I think we'll put into like making the virtual fiddle camp better than ever and open to people who can't afford the, the to pay any donation. Um, but I wanted the audience to like get an idea of what uh, what it was like uh, to, to do this virtual silent movie. So I, I ended up a little clip, and and uh, part of my fun thing is that I have musical jokes. So this is one of this particular clip has my favorite musical joke uh, in the Phantom of the Opera that we did at Halloween. So check out this silent movie clip and see if you get the musical joke, and then. Let us know uh, at some point. So continue. So see if anybody can uh, gets the musical jokes there, and uh, and maybe we'll have some more silent movies in the future to get us through this tough winter coming up. So, meanwhile, we, let's hear uh, go on with the show with some of our wonderful artists. For sure, yeah, and uh, yeah, it was a great experience to do the silent movie. It was a cool experiment. So I hope we do do more. And uh, as Doug mentioned. Right into the chat, we are keeping an eye on the chat, and um, later, this is a dinner show, and we like to emphasize that too, so we'd love to also know what you're doing for dinner while you watch the show, and later, at, towards the end of the show, we'll check in with what people have been writing in, so um, definitely uh, let us know what's going on there in the chat box. But, um, Doug, I'm going to check in with you later, and uh, we'll move over to our first guest. Um, I'm very excited to bring on... Uh, uh, no stranger to the digital realm even before this pandemic and really um, one of one of the best uh, online sort of streaming performers and teachers that I've seen um, since this whole thing's been going on. The great mandolin player uh, and very good friend of mine, Baron Collins Hill, is here. Hey, Baron. Hey, Neil. How's it going? Good. Glad to have you. Um, I was uh, involved in uh, sort of helping run the workshop you gave this afternoon, which I thought was really elucidating people got a lot out of um what have you been up to during the pandemic oh a lot of this kind of stuff doing a i teach mandolin online on my website uh mando lessons which uh it doesn't matter if you're a mandolin player or a fiddle player i put out a new lesson every single week a lot of fiddle tunes a lot of stuff i learned at fiddle camp um yeah kind of doing a new lesson there all the time and a, a stream here and a stream there and yeah. taught it uh, fiddle hell recently and looking forward to winter main fiddle camp yeah it seems like a there's lot a lot going, going on, on somehow in spite of all of us being stuck at home yeah um where are you uh coming to us from i'm coming from 
Portland, Oregon, where I moved out here uh, with Emma Swartz, who you may know from the main fiddle camp kitchen and a great fiddle and accordion player herself. We moved out here. She's from here. Her old family's out here. We moved out here in February, just in time for things to get interesting. Right. So this is a cross-country Portland to Portland conversation yes, right now. Um, and uh, just one other question for you there. Um, sure what, is that your music room? Are those all yours in instruments there? Uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've had a lot of time to sit around and look for instruments on the internet. <laughs> in between streams, I uh, <laughs> yeah, kind of get away, it gets away from me sometimes. Well, I don't want to take uh, any more time away from your um, your music because it's going to be great. I can't wait to hear what you've got for us. So uh, I'm going to get off the screen, and everyone, uh, please make welcome Baron Collins Hill. Thank you, Neil. I figured, uh, I thought long and hard about what I wanted to play in the last five minutes, and figured I'd play you some tunes from Quebec don't get to play Quebec tunes all that much, so figured I'd do it now. Uh, this is the first tune I don't have a name for, but I learned from the playing of Chris Wood and Andy Cutting, a great English duo. I learned a lot of tunes from Lisa Ornstein. Ornstein? Uh, hard to play and talk at the same time, but uh, it's on one of their demo tapes. So that was, uh, apparently, I was looking at the chat there, the White Post, Pateau Blanc. My French is terrible, so I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but I think I can read the English, the White Post. Good to know. 
Uh, I had not found a name for that one. Uh, and then I played Chum de Blue, the Blueberry Field, I believe, is the English translation as the second tune. A couple of nice A tunes. The second tune I learned from the playing of Yvonne Mimo, who uh, has been to fiddle camp in the past. Excellent Quebecois fiddle player. All right, let's see. Next up, I'm going to play a, two, a tune called uh, Real, I've seen it as Castongue and also Gastongue with a C or a G. Nice little more mellow number. love that tune. Nice mellow one. I could pretty much play that one for 20 minutes, but I'll uh, spare you all a little bit of my repetitive natures. Well, I thought I was going to be able to get Emma Swartz to join me on a tune, but she had to heed the call and go off mushroom hunting with her brother. So hopefully she's bringing back dinner. Um, that would be nice. But uh, we'll see. Her brother is a great mushroom forager and knows his stuff so she's in good hands don't worry 
but we'll have to have another time when we can get Emma to join us. So I'll keep on with the tunes. Hope you all are enjoying your Saturday evenings. Having a good Saturday afternoon out here on the West Coast. Next tunes I'll play, I'm going to play, I learned from La Tête de Violon, which is uh, the Fiddleheads. It's a group that Guy Bouchard, um, who's also been to fiddle camp in the past, a great Quebecois mentor of mine. Uh, it's his group, uh, or his, and these are, I mostly think of them as the second set off of his second album. <laughs> but I do have the names because I wrote them down. It's La Gallop de Bay St. Paul and La Ronfleuse de Thomas Pomerleau. I like these tunes as well. I hope you do as well. Alright. Especially if we can start them. Ah. I'm going to try a little bit of foot percussion, but I'm also wearing slippers, so let's see if we succeed here. I'm gonna tip a microphone just in case. Hopefully that comes through. crooked ones there for you. Hope you were playing along or stomping along or counting along. It's good to do something. All right, well, once again, thank you all for tuning in. I think I got one more and then I'm gonna 
pass it back off to Neil and Doug and the rest of the show. I'm looking forward to hearing Jeremiah and Ed and Bennett. It's going to be a great evening of music, and I'm looking forward to listening in. Got a couple tunes, end with some jigs. Uh, first tune is The Field in the Forest by Adam Broom from Quebec. Uh, and then I will play uh, Maison de Glass, a classic tune by Rajon Brunet, I believe. I can't remember off the top of my head. Names tend to disappear as I'm trying to do too many things at once. Uh, but hope you enjoy. jigs to finish things off thank you all so much for tuning in great to uh connect with y'all in the workshop that we're there thanks for sticking around and thanks for neil and doug for organizing all this and everybody who takes part thank you baron what a great set to kick us off some really sweet mandolin tunes always love to hear you play and thanks for being part of this um i think oh, everyone my really pleasure. enjoyed your stuff thanks for having me yeah all right, we'll let you, uh, I know it's a little earlier over there, but maybe getting ready for dinner soon, depending on how when you eat these getting days. There. So we'll let you get towards that. 
Um, and I'm going to bring on, well, Baron Collins Hill, everybody. Give him a round of applause as you can. Um, and I'm going to bring back on my co-host here, your fearless leader, Doug Protzik. Hey, Doug. Oh, that was fantastic. I, I loved I love Baron's uh, set there. That was wonderful. And uh, But everybody, you know, sometimes at Maestro Bistro, just like at Main Fiddle Camp, we have special surprise guests. Oh, that's and right. So, is, is there someone? Uh, well, that's the question. Is there a special surprise guest? And by golly, there is. As a matter of fact, yeah. very special surprise guests. They've been surprise guests at Main Fiddle Camp before. And I've been missing them so much playing music in this COVID situation. I love playing music with these guys. So please make welcome here, Louis and Maureen Matthew. All right, guys. Hey. Hi. Good to see you, buddies. Hi, long time no see. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I miss playing, playing with you guys so much. Oh, we do too, man. It's been a long year not playing out. At the, you know, at the uh, farmers markets and the square dances, it's uh, it's been a long, long year, you know. Oh, not it has all those nursing homes. So I love playing the nursing homes with you guys. It's so much fun. They miss us too, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I can hardly wait till we get back to doing that again. But meanwhile, thank you so much for being special surprise guests and 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 uh, you know, uh, Louis, Louis and I go way back because. Uh, uh, his dad was one of the major fiddle influences uh, throughout all, everybody that started Main Fiddle Camp and that and and that been into fiddling since we were in our early twenties. That was Lucian Matthew, and Lucian loved coming to Fiddle Camp. He was he was the best, and and what a great great father he was for you, huh, huh Louis? Yeah, I'm lucky to have a, an old man like him, you know, and. Uh... You know, I grew up in a family of fiddlers, and uh, they gave me a little guitar when I was uh, seven years old because there was no guitar players in the family. It was all fiddlers, so I had to learn to play the guitar first before I learned to play the fiddle. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and and you were always wanted people always wanted you to play guitar for their fiddling, and Lucian always used to say. But I'm telling you, Louie, he can really play that fiddle. But everybody wants him to play guitar all the time. So, uh, you know, uh, we miss Lucian so much. Uh, we found uh, a, a really great video clip. I'd like to show it. And maybe you could explain a little bit about the two fantastic gentlemen that are accompanying him. Sure. That, and and that's, uh, that, that's who is that? Al Hawks? Uh, and Drew Smith. And Drew Smith. And and Drew Smith was a, a, a fabulous auto heart player, right? Oh, he was one of the uh, renowned uh, best uh, auto heart players in the country a few years ago. He's ninety one years old now, and I'm he's still strong. playing. And and people can find him on online. They're just uh, you know just type in his name, Drew Smith Auto Heart, and yeah. uh, on Facebook, and yeah. they can see he, he was. Uh, I enjoyed playing with him and Al and my dad. So much. I mean, oh, in this clip, in this clip, you really get to see how much the music meant to Lucian and the three of them. Al Hawks, of course, is a main legend in mandolin playing and and bluegrass and everything. And uh, so maybe Neil, you could roll that clip for us.
fantastic. Uh, and, and that Woodsman, too. The Woodsman. What a great classic down east fiddle tune. Uh, uh, one of my favorites. I, I'm been trying to re relearn it again listening to this video. So Yeah, it's uh, done in Al Hawks' basement quite a few years ago, probably 20, 25 years ago now. They they got together and did a little recording, put that CD together, the three of them. You know? That's right. Al, Al Hawks lived right down the road from you guys, so, so Lucian and he must have played a lot over the years and stuff. Oh, yeah. One mile. That's one mile, one mile away. That's one mile away. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, an another thing that really uh, impressed me with you guys, is I, I, I love the band. I, I love playing with your band, uh, the Sakurapa Boys. What a great bunch of guys they are with with Dale Holden and, and, uh, and uh, Wayne, uh, Smith. Wayne Smith. Oh, fantastic. And, and uh, Wayne Smith on banjo and, and, and Dale on uh, guitar. Oh, I love, love playing with the Sakurapa Boys. I know that's your main band, you and Maureen. Uh, and you guys, you you came up with like this unbelievable song last March that impressed me so much. Um, and uh, tell us a little bit, a bit about that. It was, it was during the first quarantine, and uh, you know I, we've been in the house for about a month or so, and just and I went downstairs with a cup of coffee and a little bit of maybe a little bit of vodka in it or something I can't remember, but I started sitting there and just started strumming my guitar. And, and this song came to me, and I think I wrote it uh, within a half an hour, the, the quarantine song. And uh, it really took off for a while. And uh, we ended up on 207. We ended up on uh, a couple of radio stations. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then when it started dying down a little bit, but now we're right back to where you we're know, again. So it's probably a good, a good appropriate yeah. time to play it or something. It is. So you, so uh, Wayne, Wayne is this, like this brilliant uh, computer guy. And, and way back in March in that first quarantine, he came up, he, you guys produced this virtual ensemble. And when I saw this, I said, well, if we do a main fiddle camp, this is what we got to do. We got to do it. What Wayne did here is this virtual stuff because you did that right away. And so it was really it's track. We did, if anybody wants to go to our website, Sakurapa Boys, S-A-C-C-A-R-A-P-P-A, -P -P -A, you can... You can see all we, we we put about a dozen songs or more together this summer, uh, and 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 I do we Maureen and I would do our parts and Wayne and Dale would do his part, and he mixed it all together, and they just come out so good, you know. That, I know that's fantastic. So maybe let's take a let everybody see this song now, quarantine, right. and then after that we're gonna go r right into. You guys singing a song for us live, okay? Live, okay. All right, we'll do it. You're gonna have to change your 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 settings in between. So we're gonna play the video, and then you guys are gonna take us off with a song. So thanks again for being a part of uh, Maestro Bistro, and let's see this quarantine video now. Howdy, everybody. It's Lou and Maureen. We wrote this song a couple of days ago, and it's all about what's going on now. It's called Quarantine. Oh, 
take him for a ride. Breaking this song's over, hook up with our friends. We'll have a big old party. quarantine song. I hope you guys liked it. Here's a little song called uh, what's it called, honey? Company's Coming. Company's An Coming. Porter Wagner song from 1957. And well, I wasn't going to say that. We stole we stole it from him, but uh, hopefully we can it, have company again sometime, all of us. But yeah, and it's about a song. <laughs> if you think about a hundred years ago or two hundred years ago, uh, when life was a lot slower and people didn't get too much company back then. And if it if they did, it was a it was a big deal. And this is a story about that back a uh, hundred so years ago. And this is little brother Billy. He's up on a hill, and he's looking down over the over the hill there. And about a mile away, he sees this covered wagon coming. And so he gets all excited, and he's gonna he's gonna go back and, and tell the whole family about it. It's called Company Coming. It goes like this. Ready? Wow, what a great what a great surprise guest, Doug. Oh, I know. They're the best. Oh, what a treat. Real main tradition there. Yeah, thanks so much to 
both Louie and Maureen for joining us. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got more regularly scheduled amazing guests to get to. So I think we'll continue right along with this jam-packed show. Absolutely. Great, great artists coming right up. Yeah. So our next uh, guest is a been been a, at the top of the New England traditional music scene for years. Um, one of my favorite pianists and accordionists anywhere. Please make welcome Jeremiah McLean. Hey, Jeremiah. Hey, Neil. How's it going? Good. Very good. Good. That was fun. I was really uh, entertaining and I was smiling. <laughs> yeah, it was a blast. I uh, We actually, we had you scheduled to come on a couple months ago. Um, uh, just around when you had a pretty terrible catastrophe happen with your house burning down. Yep. Um, how, how have you been, what, what's been going on the last few months since then? Uh, well, we, um, we cleaned up the site. That was a big thing. And now we're getting ready. We're planning a house. We're going to start building in the spring. Right. I always think if you're having a pandemic, um, if you're going to have your house burned down, you might as well do it during a pandemic year because it kind of like consolidates all the misery that you can have. <laughs> I would hate oh. to have it like the year afterwards when everything is coming back. You know, I guess it's... that's fair. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, I know there was a GoFundMe um, campaign to help help you out uh, while that was with, with everything. Um, is that still live? Yes, that is still out there. A uh, friend of ours, uh, Margaret Roddy put it up on Facebook, I think. Yep. And as far as I know, it's still going. Um, I just want to shout out to um, our good friend, Katie, who also had a house burned down this summer. Unbelievably, right. two main fiddle camps within, one, within three weeks of each other. Right. That's kind of amazing. It's really unbelievable. Yep. I found, if anyone's curious, if you haven't uh, been part of that GoFundMe, I found it by just searching for Jeremiah's name under the GoFundMe search bar. Um, but you, it's also called the Phoenix Fund for Anamika and Jeremiah. Um, anyway, uh, we encourage people to check that out, but um, we've got you here to share some music with us. Um, and uh, I know a lot of people are really looking forward to your workshop this afternoon. I heard that went great. Um, have you been working on, uh, what have you been working on musically? Um, well, um, I, I've got a couple of bands that uh, unfortunately have members in Canada. So that makes getting together really tricky right now. Yep. Um, but we are, uh, I was part of a showcase recently with, uh, we're on a label called Canis Major, which has, um, um, based actually in Vermont, uh, Northern Vermont. So Danielle put together a, a showcase with a bunch of performers and presenters, and we were all together on Zoom. You know, it was interesting to hear presenters talk about what, what it's like for them. They're gonna be presenting in 2022. Right. So I was thinking, okay, so that's a long year ahead. So let's get good at Zoom and let's get good at being together like this because, you know, that's what we got. Yeah. Well, with that in mind, I'd love to hear what you've got for us musically and get myself off the screen here. So everyone, please make Jeremiah welcome. Jeremiah. Yes, no. Well, I'm going to take these off for starters. Um, I gave a workshop in Breton Tunes this afternoon. Uh, so I thought I would I would start with some Breton tunes. These are um, tunes from uh, an accordionist by the name of Yves Menez. He was really popular in the 30s and 40s. He was absolutely in love with American jazz, and so he called his group Jazz Menez. And these two tunes um, are associated with his playing, and they're uh, they're gavots. He called them swing gavot. So two tunes from Brittany. Thank you. 
up, so I'm not the headless accordion player. Um, so I'm going to play a tune now. Um, well, it's a mazurka, um, a type of a French dance tune. But this particular mazurka was written by an Englishman, uh, Dave Shepard. And uh, he played in a, a band called Blausabella, which was a really, really big band in the folk scene in Europe. Uh, there were members of the band from France and England. They played really great French folk dance music. And that band also had a, an accordionist in it called Andy Cutting. Uh, and Andy Cutting has been a great influence on me. He's a wonderful guy, great tune writer, wonderful player. So I, um, I, I get this tune um, from his playing. Uh, it's called The Origin of the World. <laughs> And um, I hope you like it. Shepherd. I'm just going to play one more set of tunes. Um, it's been a long night. As with all great fiddle camp nights, things always run a little late, you know, despite Doug's greatest efforts. So, um, sorry about that. I'm going to finish up with a couple of tunes that I made up. Uh, these are two waltzes. Uh, the first one actually is a 5 4 waltz. Um, which is a type of waltz very popular in, in ball folk scene in Northern Europe. The, the second tune is a regular 3-4 waltz, a fast 3-4. Um, I actually wrote it after listening to a tune of Andy Cuttings called Ricer 2. And, and it, Andy, in addition to being a really great guy and wonderful musician, is very got a very amazingly dry English wit. 
So he, uh, years ago, he had written a tune called Ricer, which is uh, like a potato masher. So then he wrote this other tune that I was playing, and he, and he calls that one Ricer 2, Potato Masher 2. I think this is a great name for a tune. So when I wrote this, this waltz, uh, very influenced by that tune, I thought I tried to think of a good name, and because it seemed like a French waltz, I, I thought of a woman's name, you know, a French woman's name, Fanny. We would pronounce it Fanny in English, but in French they say Fanny. So then I thought, well, okay, what rhymes with Fanny? And I, all I could come up with is Vanny, which means vanilla. So Fanny Vanny. Um, and the first tune does not have a name. Um, I wrote it this year, back in Easter, when things, you know, were getting weird. It seemed like the world was just going crazy. Um, little did I know. So that one will will remain titleless, titleless for right now. Uh, but I just want to say thanks to Neil and Doug for doing, you know, Maestro Bistro. Stick around. Ed Howe, Bennett Knesny are going to play after this. And uh, I hope to see you guys sometime soon.
Thank you all. Um, thanks to Doug and Neil. Hope to see you this, this winter somewhere. Thanks, Jeremiah. That was really beautiful. Really a pleasure to have You're you welcome. in the show here. Um, oh, sorry. I was just saying thank you so much. It was so beautiful, and it's a real pleasure to have you in the show. Really great. Thanks. All right. Take care. Um, I'm Doug, I'm going to pull you back up here for one second. Great. How's it going? Oh man, Jeremiah, that was beautiful. Really nice. I think we've got we've got just one more guest to get to, but just beforehand, I thought we were going to check in just a little bit with uh, with with our audience and how people are doing out there. Um, yeah, watching the show. I saw my friend Kate. His family they're they're eating uh, uh, be black bean soup with cornbread. That sounds awfully good to me. Yeah, we got a bunch of people early on just saying what they're eating. Let me see if I can find it there. Um, oh yeah, here we are. Kate was having black bean, bean soup with cornbread. We had a bit of a, a couple different themes. I feel like there was a Mexican uh, or you know um, Latin American food uh, theme with here with sopes and fried, refried beans as well. But then there was also some uh, sort of um, Italian vibes. Pam had made some spaghetti sauce. Uh, another and and then there was some pizza. Although here's a reminder that um, we're. Uh, with the with the um, digital virtual camp, we're being um, seen by people all over the world. So it's not just dinner time for everybody. This show is not just a dinner show anymore, um, which is pretty exciting. But it's, but we can we always talk about food at any rate. So we certainly cool. can. Yeah, and uh, I know food. Sometimes we have a real big feature on food. This time around, it wasn't as focused because we had such a great special surprise guest. But um, I know we've got some stuff coming down the pipe. For, uh, we for do. Months, we so. do have some not cool food. Let any secrets go, but and oh. then people want to submit videos too. They can they can submit a little video about some favorite food. We've got That's some right. special videos coming up uh, in the future shows about food. So That's right. Oh, we've got a couple more submissions about about being eating. Uh, oh, uh, clicked on the wrong one. There, Noah's having some <laughs> roasted snapper. Yeah, and um, and we got. Some, so we just got lots of people chiming in now. So it's oh, it's exciting. really great to roast the vegetables. What a great way to eat vegetables roasted! It opens up a whole new panoply of tastes. So yeah, so yeah, so you're mentioning the video, and I just that's the last thing I just want to mention here um, as well to, to everyone. We're encouraging you guys to to be part of the show. If you have a a short like two two minute video or something about some food specialty that you have in your family or uh, something you grow in your garden that you want to send in you know, send it in to us and, uh, and maybe we'll, maybe we'll be able to feature it in the show. That'd be exciting. Um, it doesn't need to just be us featuring our food. Um, and I also want to remind you again, it's scrolling across the bottom there, but, um, that, that PayPal link, it should be in the description for the video as well. If you're uh, inclined to donate, um, we'd appreciate it. Anyway, we should get to our last guest because this is very exciting. Um, it, from a very, very special location. Um, we've got a, a band playing live together, which isn't as much seen these days. Um, this is uh, the we we uh, we got Ed Howe to be involved, and we've got someone who's been involved in one of the earlier bistros, but plays with Ed under the band name Drive Train. So this is Ed Howe and uh, Ben Akinesny here. Um, um, hey guys! Hey, it worked! It How worked! Do you do? <laughs> yeah, we can see you there. <laughs> Can, can you hear us? I can't even imagine. You turn on the camera and then something happens. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're yeah, here where are you guys? Fire Belfast. Yeah, we're roasting. Uh, we're roasting house. banjos by the fire here. You can see it. Uh, uh, here's the very, fire. Uh, just, healthy uh, snack. Just so you know, <laughs> it's real. It's real. <laughs> um, All this yeah. smoke just keeps the the coronavirus out of the air. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I heard that's, uh, that's, that's, that's solid science. Fumigating. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so before you guys oh, play, speaking of which, <laughs> <laughs> before we get to the music, just quickly ask you about some of the projects you're working on, and as you um, mentioned your soundandsolar.com. You want to say something about that? Yes, we install off-grid solar. We are stay as far away from the grid as possible. Anytime you guys want to go out in a boat or out on an island or get the get get out get out there we can put in batteries solar panels and uh and eventually once this all goes away we can provide sound for your next that's, festival that's, that's, amazing. <laughs> that's amazing 
Oh, Keep by that in the mind. way, I've never seen this thing before. I have no <laughs> idea what this thing does. <laughs> it just well, bought a I huge uh, trailer. Right. It just bought a huge trailer. It's a solar powered sound system basically or a solar powered battery system tell them about that. yeah we just uh we just did a little gathering down in north carolina and ran a bunch of food trailers and all kinds of stuff off of it so next time you come to main fiddle camp in person you'll get to see us out in the ball field that is exciting, exciting. yes um and bennett you were mentioning your uh, work songs .org. yep i run a project called the work song project which is all about reviving old work songs and getting them back to work in the field, in boats, and in the forest. And uh, part of that project with my uh, work song community chorus here in Belfast, we sing and plant garlic, among other things. And I sell the garlic as sort of part of, as an outgrowth of that project. So I've still got a little bit of garlic left if anybody wants to get it in the ground. It hasn't frozen up yet. Or uh, serve it at your Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. So email Great. me Bennett at worksongs.org and I can ship it right to ya. <laughs> cool. Well, um, I hope people check those projects out. Um, but I'm going to get off the screen here and, and let you guys take us take us home. This is our last guest of the night uh, at How Bennett Kinesky Drive Train. Thanks, guys. You got it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Neil, for uh, setting us up here. And uh, I think we're going to put another Gibson banjo on here and get this thing going so we can uh, play some music for you guys. Oh, man. Those uh, synthetic heads don't burn very well. But anyway, we are still in tune. I picked up my fiddle case and I opened it up about six months after I ever played it again and uh, thought I was never going to play my fiddle. And I picked it up and it was in tune. And I came out to Bennett and it said, Bennett, let's play some tunes. I'm right in tune, and he played this guitar, and it was exactly a half step out. <laughs> so we got it tuned up. What are we going to play for him? I have no up. idea. <laughs> Thank you. 
to the fire. <laughs> Welcome to the fire. What? Oh, gee. <laughs> mm, gotta get that neck back in now. <laughs> Mm, five strings burn a lot better than them four strings, I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Jeez. What do you think? Well, let's, since we got the fire going, let's sing old Rabbit in the Log. Rabbit in the Log. There's Rabbit in the Log, and I ain't got my dog. How will I get him? I know. I'll get me a briar, and I'll twist it in his hair. That's how I'll get him. Just bunkered down up here in the woods. Jeez. Growing garlic. Yep. Yep. You and your garlic. You and your solar panels. Me and my solar. You know, <laughs> at least you can talk to your garlic. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, alive. Like, it's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Yeah. Yeah. We it's sing alive. to the garlic quite a bit. 
You do. It, it, it has a specific name to it, doesn't it? Music. Music. Music garlic. Music yeah. garlic. You gotta sing to it. Yeah. You no, know, it's so funny. I got a, a clove of that garlic and I put it in my frying pan. And it starts singing to me. It starts singing this <laughs> amazing music. Oh, yeah. That's why we call it the oh. music garlic. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Mm. Ed, so you know, good. we're here in Belfast. Did I, ever, did I tell you about the time I was driving back from town and a couple weeks ago? No, you didn't you tell know, me about that we time. We got this you... big old batch of chicken bands down on Route 3. If you, really? If you go out there and you bang a right like you're headed to town, there's, some, there's about four chicken bands there. You bang a right. You, yeah. you don't you just veer right. <laughs> you bang a right. You bang a right. I was driving back from town and bang a right. I think all of a sudden, town, right? out of the ditch comes this chicken. And I was driving about 55 miles an hour, that chicken comes running right next to me like this. He comes screaming past me in the breakdown lane. Jeez, really? Yeah, so I was driving well, right along. Really? And it it banged a had right up behind the farmer's house and went out back into the woods. Hard right. Had right. Hard right. I said, what Not the Not left. He went right. <laughs> went right. Yeah, and I pulled in there, and I, I knocked on the door. I said, excuse me, uh, sir. Are you raising chickens in these bands these days? Because Belfast was the broiler capital of the world. Right, right, right. He said, yeah, yeah, we started raising chickens again. Comedy came around, people like yeah. that, that local food. And I said, okay, well, I was just driving along here, and one of your chickens raced past me in the breakdown lane going about 65 miles an hour. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, we got these new special Belfast three-legged chickens. And I said, really, three-legged <laughs> really? chickens? I ain't never heard of that. Why do you have three-legged chickens? When two leggeds are perfectly good. And he said, Well, do you like to eat roast chicken for yeah, dinner? Well, absolutely. And I said, I well sure I do. Yeah. Of course I do. And he said, yeah. Well, does the missus like to eat roasted chicken for dinner? Well, but of course. And I said, Yeah, she Every does. night. <laughs> Every night. And he said, if you got a friend over like Ed Howe, for instance, does he like to eat three does he like oh, to eat gosh. a chicken well, leg know, of chicken for dinner? Best, absolutely the best. Said, so he said, Why would you raise two legged chicken if you could raise three and feed the whole gang? And you I know. said, well, that's absolutely true. Yeah. And I said, well, have you tasted one? How do they taste? And he said, I don't know. With them extra, with that extra leg, he's so fast, we can't catch him to find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that problem. Always again, that third leg. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs>
It's amazing, guys. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Great tunes. Great tunes. Oh yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having us. It's really nice to be part of this and way to go, Neil and Doug and everybody who's involved in the back end. Thank you guys for <sighs> keeping the bistros going and keeping the fiddle camp going and we're looking forward to seeing you all and playing in, in person next year. And man, uh, one other question. Was that a wolf that passed through? Just in the middle of your yeah, middle set? There's definitely a wolf passing through. We got a lot of coyotes and wolves. I've got about 6,000 acres of beautiful swamp out back here. Uh, Man, for that? Towards Belmont. So. <laughs> well, really beautiful. And uh, don't let us stop you if you need to play more tunes around the fire. But uh, thanks for sharing them with us. You got it, buddy. Have a good night, good both of you. Have a great night, everybody. All right, Doug. Hey. A, I think that's that our show evening that was a fabulous show and uh and and it finished it off really well so um i think it's time to call it good but uh maybe we'll meet some folks back in the main tent after the show yeah so I'm, I'm gonna reset my settings to to play us out and you're gonna sure. take us out while you're doing that i'm just going to uh let you all know um this one last reminder about the link there as well to donate but i also want to let you know we already are um confirmed for our lineup for next month we're doing another bistro third saturday of the month i believe that's december 19th um and we will have katie newell um uh kenny raskin and frank farrell so a really nice um another really nice representation of various musical aspects of main fiddle camp giving workshops and performing in the show so uh, i hope you'll join us next month for that um registration should open fairly soon on the website so keep an eye out at mainfiddlecamp.org um, for all the stuff going on. And definitely stay tuned for information on our February uh, winter virtual Main Fiddle Camp. I'm going to say goodnight now. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm going to hand it back to Doug to play us out. Take care, everybody. Thank you.